got Cyberpunk details for the Mac, retro handhelds might get a YouTuber tossed in jail, and Intel competing with AMD on their best chip they've ever made? Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Thursday, July 17th, 2025. And we're gonna start off today talking about the announcement that's hitting Apple's right now, which is Cyberpunk. It's now playable on Mac devices as long as they have Apple Silicon and as long as they have 16 gigabytes of unified memory, they will be able to play this game. And we also have the system requirements for that and what you can generally expect out of it. So if you're on a base level M1 Mac, you're looking at 900p 30fps with minimum settings. To get recommended settings for 1080p 60, you're looking at an M3 Pro. To get high fidelity, that's an M2 Ultra and M3 Max at 1440p 60. And then to get very high fidelity, 1440p 60, you're looking at the M3 Ultra or M4 Max. Now, one of the things that was confirmed by CD Projekt Red with this is number one, all of those settings include a upscaling to in order to hit those resolutions. So I don't know exactly how good this is going to look. It's probably already out there by the time this episode of Hot News is getting released. But then number two, none of these have ray tracing enabled, even though you can enable them after the fact. So maybe we'll do a little testing, playing around with it because you can use your Steam version, which I already have. I already have a Mac. I should be able to see exactly how much performance we're getting on Cyberpunk on these laptops and just kind of see what that looks like. But don't worry, it's not just Apple who's getting all the goodness from CD Projekt Red for a new Cyberpunk update. Everybody else gets an update as well, including if you're on PC or console. There's new content updates, there's new vehicles and quests to unlock them, there's new paint jobs, there's new photo mode options, quality of life improvements, improved HDR settings, FSR 4 is now added, FSR 3.1 frame gens added, XCSS 2.0 with XCSS frame gens added, HDR 10 plus for Intel's added, and then variable refresh rate on consoles also being added to the game that they said that they were done updating a while ago. We're kind of in the exact opposite situation we were when Cyberpunk launched, which was overpromised and underdelivered, and now they're just like straight up lying to us about not providing more content, and then they keep doing it. I think this is like the second or third time they said that they're not gonna give us more updates, and then they went ahead and did it anyways. But Cyberpunk 2077 on two new platforms in the last couple months, it's on the Switch, and now it's on Apple, and then it's also getting updates everywhere else. And in case you wanna play this new update, maybe you're looking to upgrade your system in order to do that, you could definitely do that with today's video sponsor. What's up, my Jawa maniacs? That's the nickname for fans of Jawa I'm trying to get started. And no, Jawa does not know that, but they do know they're sponsoring today's video. As a Jawa maniac, you probably already know that Jawa is the number one marketplace to buy and sell PCs and PC hardware online. You probably also know that the buyers and sellers are other PC enthusiasts, just like you. Take a little stroll through the website here, you'll see tons of goodies. Believe it or not, every listing here is manually verified by a real Jawa employee before it goes up on the site. These guys take security and privacy really seriously. Whether you're buying or selling, your transactions are safe and secure. Certain sellers can also be verified by Jawa to earn this nifty little badge. This one here is on Jawa's official store, so of course, they trust themselves. Also, I tend to talk a lot about GPUs when I'm blabbing about Java, so we're staying fresh today. Boom, CPU deal for you. AMD Ryzen 9 7900X for $260. If you're a fella that's still hanging on to AM4, this might be a great way to carry you into the wonderful world of AM5. Whatever the price is, you can always make the number smaller by trading in your older CPU and putting the value towards your new one. Java's CPU trading program is super easy. Just tippy type all your numbers and words in and you'll get an instant off. It genuinely takes less than a minute. Even though I tried, I'm still gonna talk about GPUs because of course Java has them and the same trade-in program takes graphics cards. You can also talk about GPUs or whatever else goes into a computer with other Java maniacs in their official Discord. Get advice, share builds, or find impossible to pass deals, all with other tech enthusiasts. Give your PC a little facelift and check out the awesome deals Jawa's got on offer via the link in the description. And remember, keep using code UFD10 to save 10% off up to $10. Thanks to Jawa for sponsoring. Well, you could also use Jawa to pick up a GPU that you might stuff in an eGPU, an external graphics processing unit, one of those boxes that you stick the GPU in. Razer announcing that they're getting back into the game with the new Core X V2 coming in with a quad slot support for a Thunderbolt 5 dock that can support up to technically 120 gigabits per second, but because of the PCI Express lane limitation, it's only 64 gigabits per second, but can provide up to 140 watts of power to whatever laptop you're trying to run. However, the difference between this and the previous Razer Core X is that the power supply is now sold separately. You have to provide that 
that yourself instead of having a 500 watt power supply included. But it's nice to see that this is coming back. It is gonna cost $350, which is a pretty penny. But in case you've been paying attention to UFD Tech, we've been reviewing a lot of the Razer laptops lately, the Blade 18, 16, and we're working on the 14 review right now. We might uh, do a little bit of testing with the eGPU and see how it works with those Razer laptops, especially since those have Thunderbolt 5 support. And it's just also kind of a nice hearkening back to when we played around with the Core X years ago. Yeah, six years ago, uh, ray tracing on a MacBook Air, put a 2060 with a MacBook Air, and then we also did a 2080 Ti in a MacBook Air using the Razer Core X. This is back when you could dual boot Windows and they were running x86 Intel processors. And it was a whole little thing to have fun with, but uh, no longer. Unless somehow with all of the ARM support that's gonna be coming out for Qualcomm and potentially the N1X for NVIDIA, we might start getting better GPU support for the Apple Silicon somehow on Windows for their ARM setup. I don't know. Maybe maybe the future is going to be more intriguing than uh, it has been in the past. And uh, what's not going to be as intriguing because it's all going to get leaked by the time it happens. Made by Google event is happening August 20th. This is where we're expecting the Pixel 10 as well as all of the various other gadgets that Google likes to announce is going to be revealed again August 20th. Mark your calendar for uh, having somebody on stage tell you something that was already revealed on the internet like a full month ahead of time. But hopefully Reese can reveal uh, pricing to you on good good sales stuff for computer parts. That's what he does. Yo, welcome back to UFT Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals on the internet and I'll jump straight into the deals for you guys today. Starting off today, we have this ID Cooling Ice Fan 240 ARGB Snow, which is a dual 120 millimeter design going for only $14.99, making it $15 off. But then secondly, we have the Anchor Prime Charger 200 watt six port charging station for only $55.99 with a coupon applied making it $24 off if you're anything like us. We have these charging stations all around just to keep all our devices charged at any time. And hey, lastly today, we have this mount up triple monitor vase amount available in white for only $99.99, making it $40 off. But if you pick up the black variant, you can get an extra $11 off. And hey, with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm gonna hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Reese, in case you're one of the people who picks up these little retro handhelds like the Ambernix or what happened have you that come preloaded with tons of ROMs, I uh, think you might want to be a little bit more suspicious of that moving forward because now a YouTuber in Italy is reporting that he was visited by Italian authorities and is facing some charges with regards to covering these little retro gaming handhelds that are out there. So the YouTube channel Once Were Nerd posted this video discussing how Italian authorities showed up at his door with a search warrant and seized over 30 of the various different and gaming handhelds that he had, specifically violating one of Italy's laws with regards to copyright. Now, based on my preliminary reading, it seems like this is a law that was written in 1941, so it's a little unclear how this is applying right now. Ars Technica just hypothesizing that potentially Nintendo's the one who instigated this in Italy because they are upset about the amount of preloaded ROMs that are coming in on these handhelds, which is, no matter how you slice it, a very weird gray area when you're getting an SD card loaded on a gaming handheld that uh, has thousands of games, which nobody paid for whatsoever. Like gray area, no matter which part of the world you're living in. But based on the Italian copyright law that's being violated, allegedly could get a maximum fine of 15,000 euro and up to three years of jail time for all of this. Now, once we're nerd, number one says that they're complying completely with authorities with regards to all of this. And number two, that they've never taken a sponsorship from Envernick. They don't even use affiliate codes in their links, so they weren't benefiting monetarily off of it from using those specific devices besides potentially any AdSense that they would get from getting views on their videos. But it's an intriguing situation that we haven't seen here in the United States. I don't believe I've heard of this happening in any other region of the world yet, but this could be, at least if you read Ars Technica's hypothesization, a new strategy by Nintendo to get people to stop promoting things that they don't like, which if it's true would be would be a serious attack against their community. But let me know what you think of all this down below in the comments. We'll keep you updated as this plays out and if once we're nerd posts any more updates moving forward. But I truly hope that if the story is just that he is in trouble for releasing reviews on these handhelds that 
uh, they drop it. Hoping the best for everything that's going on there with him. And I'm also hoping for the best with Intel and their upcoming reported Nova Lake AX chip. Now we've talked about Nova Lake a little bit recently in hot news, just discussing how it's gonna have up to 52 cores with 16 performance cores, 32 efficiency cores, having the low power uh, efficiency islands as well, and how it's gonna have the celestial graphics baked in. But now there's another report coming out saying that Intel is taking strict Halo very seriously, which is the Ryzen AI Max Plus 395, a chip that goes into something like the RGZ Flow 13, which we reviewed and you check out right up there. But suffice it to say, it's a very, very powerful all-in-one APU that can do a whole lot. And it looks like Intel's taking that very seriously with them working on a Nova Lake AX chip that should compete with it up to 120 watt TDP. All of that theoretically would have up to those 52 CPU cores, which would be ridiculous on a laptop setup or even just a gaming tablet like it is on the ROG Flow. But it's also expected to have between 20 and 24 XE3 execution units, which would just again, make it a very massive GPU that's baked into this small form factor device. Maybe potentially we could see something like the framework desktop also have that. I would be excited for all of that. Now, again, Nova Lake is not necessarily in the works for launching this year. Allegedly, it's supposed to be a 2026 launch, but this could be an exciting time with Intel bolstering their GPU department. And hopefully the Nova Lake CPUs are at least competent. There's been reports that they are supposed to have something that's gonna be competitive with 3D Vcash, which would allow them to maybe gain back some of the gaming uh, losses that they've had against AMD. And just based on uh, recent reviews that we've done on like Lunar Lake laptops, which again, you can check out in the top right hand corner, their integrated GPUs are pretty decent, especially for the power consumption that they have. The MSI Claw 8 with Lunar Lake is also a mighty fine uh, gaming handheld, despite, you know, maybe some driver hiccups here and there, but the actual raw power that it's putting out is quite good. And so if we're getting a massive beefy one, I would love to see that in a gaming handheld, even if battery life isn't gonna be very great. I, I just, I like portable on the go form factor stuff. I brought the ROG Flow with the Strix Halo with me to Computex and played Expedition 33 on that for like 20 plus hours because of the flights. Like the, each flight to Taiwan and then back, I was playing tons of Expedition 33 because I could plug it into the airplane power plug and then it, it just ran because it was efficient. But then I also got really great frame rate and quality and like the, the game looked good. I had a great time and if Intel's doing that, I want to have a good time with them too. Good competition all around. And let's see if you guys said anything good in the, yesterday's comments. We got people talking about the Raptor Lake stuff. Someone without a name somehow saying, after all the BIOS updates, my 13700K just died during gaming, but had some of the Raptor Lake issues before it was known. PC turned off, went right to BIOS, all kind of weirdness with SSDs not detected and similar manual reboot, no output on display, GPU error status on the motherboard, took out the GPU, now it was RAM error, changed the RAM, still RAM error, sent the CPU back to the store, replacement CPU on the way. I'm sorry to hear that. I hope that this replacement CPU doesn't have any issues. But then CL5NE saying, my 14900K recently started crashing every 10 to 15 minutes, sometimes even less on Google Chrome. Tabs would just keep crashing. Ironically, also started happening in the summer. I swapped to AMD about two days ago and it's been smooth sailing so far. Hopefully those Cs stay calm for you. And then we got Dizzy Alex saying, I replaced my 13900KF and it still has the exact same issues. It took two plus months to get the exchange done to no avail. My Z13 Flow and my 10th gen HP the Omen laptop with the 2070 runs absolutely fine. No crashes at all, but my 13900KS is a POS. I am done with Intel. I'm glad to hear that you're also an enjoyer of the Z Flow, or Z13 Flow, whatever the uh, word combination is for that. I like that thing. I'm glad you like it too. I'm sorry to hear about your Intel troubles. And then we got Pros 7 Sauce saying, AMD shill boy, LOL. Don't get me wrong, Brett. I enjoy your videos. However, your bias troubles me. I don't, I, like, that is the least one that I can take serious. I get accused of hating AMD more than anything. So if you think I'm a shill for AMD, I think I think you've lost the plot. I, like, that is just not the common consensus for me. I have been ruthlessly uh, insulted over on uh, AMD subreddits for my takes against them and how, uh, how little respect I give them in certain regards. People don't like it when I call AMD out on certain things that I do. And so uh, calling me an AMD shill boy, that's not the logo that's staring you in the face while I'm recording hot news. There, there's a shield boy here, but uh, it ain't AMD. All right, uh, I'll see you back here for more of the Haas Tech News, hopefully tomorrow. Have a good time until then.